friends on behalf of ananta is academy in the regular series of uh, general knowledge bureau i will be giving you few items to be considered for the prelims as well as the mains examination also recently on 28th may prime minister uh, narendra modi he has paid tributes to veera savarkar this generation may not be knowing who is uh, veera savarkar but he was a great patriot he was a freedom fighter and most of the people during those days are from maharashtra similarly this veera savarkar also was born on 28th may 1883 at bagur in maharashtra in nasik which is a very famous uh, place for godavari earlier starting point he was against foreign goods those days the videshi bahishkarana was there so videshi vastra bahishkarana this was the main agenda of savarkar he propagated swadeshi that was his main idea he burnt all foreign goods on bona fide in dasara he championed atheism he doesn't believe in idol worship he was against cow worship he worked as on the abolishment of untouchability in ratnagiri district he was a, a maharashtrian to the region of ratnagiri so he was against this untouchability vinayak savarkar was the president of hindu mahasabha from 1937 to 43 for about 6 years in pune savarkar founded abhinav bharat society a new society for the hindutva he was involved in swadeshi movement he joined balagangadhar tilak swarajya party british government withdrew his ba degree he completed his ba and there was a provision for withdrawal of degree issued by the government he founded the free india society for the sake of the independence they celebrated important functions and freedom movement landmarks that was the agenda of the particular society in 1899 he was about uh, 16 years uh, old veer savarkar and ganesh savarkar started mitra vela he wrote the history of war in, war of indian independence and this book was banned by british government madam bikaji kama even then published the book veer savarkar founded two nation theory one for muslims and another for the hindus on the voyage back in 1910 he was extradited to india uh, the british government uh, extradited him and he was uh, sent out then when he was coming back on the voyage back he attempted to escape to france at the port of marseilles but the france police they arrested him and they handed over to british police he was sentenced to two life imprisonments this is a very funny thing normally one life term will be there but this gentleman because of his uh, uh, fraudulent uh, cases in the view of a british government he was given two life imprisonments for 30 years he moved to cellular jail in andamans in 1924 he was released in 1948 he was charged in the case of gandhi's assassination when god say assassinated gandhi ji they thought that savarkar also is a culprit in this he died in february 1966 so he lived for about 83 years and this was a landmark uh, uh, judgment which we have to consider when we go through the india's independence there are several uh, people from uh, balagangadhar tilak and others who gokale all these people they strived for the benefit of the india's independence and veer savarkar was the person who was sentenced to andaman the kobar jail those people who visit cellular jail there is a separate cell for uh, veer savarkar and they visit that cell and because he was there for a long time and then moving on to the other aspect of uh, another uh, supreme court judgment i will be discussing with you about the dowry death cases and the recent judgment 
passed by the Supreme Court of India. The scope of Section 304B of Indian Penal Code in the case of dowry deaths, it was widened by Supreme Court in the month of May 2021. Supreme Court called dowry harassment a pestiferous crime where women are subjected to cruelty by the covetous husbands and their in-laws. This is the main thrust of the IPC 304B. Most of the dowry death cases happen because they are in greed for the material wealth. The court indicated a judgment that a straight jacket and literal interpretation of section 304B, a penal permission on dowry deaths. It is a penal provision when 304B is uh, implemented, it will be regarding the dowry deaths. The section 304B deals, a woman should have died of burns or other bodily injuries within seven years of marriage. This was the uh, main theme of the 304B. If it happens after seven years, it will not be treated as a dowry death case of marriage. She should have she should have suffered cruelty from her husband or in-laws. This is also another important point. And the two, before death in connection with the dowry, this was also soon before. It should have happened soon before the, the death. And what is uh, the rate of dowry deaths in India? The dowry deaths accounted for 40% to 50% homicides in the country during the last decade up to 2018. If you count from uh, 2000, uh, 1999 to, to, to 2000 to 2018, it goes to 40 to 50 percent. In 2010 alone, there were 7,115 cases of dowry deaths and were registered under Section 304B. The abnormal interpretation to be avoided and greed and expectations of material benefits from the bride's family is the main reason for all these cases. The court must also put in incriminating circumstances before the accused and seek his response. Normally, the accused should be given a chance to respond to the incriminating documents wherein he has been uh, booked in this case. Then we'll move on to another important thing which happened during last week. Prime Minister Modi, he visited the cyclone hit areas of West Bengal, where the Chief Minister Mamata Energy and the Chief Secretary Alap and Bando Bajai, both of them did not attend the meeting. They said, we have another meeting. It has been pre-planned earlier and we can't avoid it. So both of them just visited the prime minister and gave two page representation regarding the cyclone hit areas and the damage and the amount which they wanted to have in the thousands of rupees, crores of rupees. The, the then a move was there to remove Alap and Bandopajai from chief secretary's post and to return back to center. And this is a rule called the rule 61 of IAS service rules of 1954. This rule was framed in 1954 and it clarifies like this. The DMOPT invoked the rule 61 of IAS uh, service rules 1954 to place the service of West Bengal Chief Secretary Alapan Bandopajai at the center. They asked him to report uh, by 10 a.m. of uh, 31st of May to the center because he did not respect the prime minister's visit and he should not he did not attend the prime minister's meeting particularly of the west bengal cyclone hit areas what is this rule 61 of a uh, service rules a cadre officer with the concern of the state government and central government depute can be deputed for service under central government or another state governments that is the rule Suppose West Bengal government 
there is a sir, uh, IAS officer of that cadre, West Bengal cadre. He can be sent on deputation to the center or to any other public sector undertaking or to any other state, depending upon the services requirement. Then in this case, the particular state government, which is the cadre controlling authority, they should accept. Then the central government also should accept. DOPT is the controlling authority. Then only this person can be sent on deputation. Normally, the deputation period is for five years and it can be extended by another two years. Total comes to seven years. In case of any disagreement, suppose the state government does not allow the rule to be implemented, the matter shall be decided by the center and the state shall give effect to the decision. The state has no option. They should relieve him immediately. Then the Supreme Court said, in December 2020, the Home Ministry had attached three IPS officers of West Bengal cadre, but the state government, the state government did not relieve them. Then it went up to the Supreme Court, and the court rejected the petition of the West Bengal government. The West Bengal government said, "This is a pandemic time, and we are in need of these police officers. We can't relieve them." But the court observed that it is the prerogative of the central government and these uh, cadre officers, IPS also is a cadre post. They should be reverted back to the center or whatever it is there. Now when we move on to another subject. The world's largest hybrid seawater desalination plant located at Kalpakam. It happened about uh, six, seven years back, but it is of a very important news item. The nuclear desalination demonstration plant that is known as NDDP, has a total capacity of 6.3 million liters per day. The multi-stage flash evaporation and reverse osmosis membrane separation technology is deployed here. The water flashes in 39 stages through small and controlled temperature drop of just two degrees per stage. The water continues to flash even when the temperature reaches as low as 40 degrees centigrade at the 39th stage, that is the last stage. So it comes to minus 49. The cost of producing distilled water using MSF technology is 10 paise per liter and 6 paise through reverse osmosis. This is more important. So in Kalpakam, they have created this facility and it is in the operation. Then we move on to another subject. The new gene causing type 2 diabetes is discovered way back in 2016. It is entirely Indian caste of researchers that has opened up a hitherto unknown and new line of inquiry into the mechanism of the disease in Indian population. This type 2 diabetes is very important in India. A sample size of 12,500 persons of Indian continent was taken for survey. The involvement of neurogen opens up a spectacularly new area, said Nikhil Tendon, professor of endocrinology at the AIMS. AIMS is the highest authority in Delhi, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So Professor Nikhil Tendon, who is uh, the head of the endocrinology, he observed after taking 12,500 persons uh, sample size. This gene is a symptomatic transporter and it is entirely Indian with a massive sample size. There is a huge role for environmental and lifestyle risk factors on the disease. This was thoroughly researched and they came to a conclusion. Then we go on to move on to the bias towards generic drugs. The government of India, particularly Modi government, they have decided to distribute and start new generic Aushad Kendras. Attempts to provide affordable generic drugs to patients are set to get a boost with free distribution of generic drugs in government hospitals of Andhra Pradesh. It was started about five years back and they started running Gen Aushadi stores. After Gen Aushadi, the unique Jivanathara model offering deep discounts of 40 to 90% of MRP started in January 2010. About a decade back, this experiment was uh, done 
at Vishakapatnam. This implementation of NGS scheme has started with the King George Hospital of Vishakapatnam. The popularization of generic drugs compared to brand drugs is a problem. There are no separate standards for generic drugs and branded drugs as per Drugs and Cosmetics Act. In India, we have an act called Drugs and Cosmetics Act. The drug controller checks the quality at medical shops and factories, and then he will give the license for the distribution of these particular things, generic drugs. Then moving on to the major problem of cancer, there are types of cancer. There are four major types of uh, cancer. One is breast cancer, cervical cancer, endometrial uterine cancer, and prostate cancer. High risk groups for cancer affliction includes tobacco users, chronic alcohol, alcoholics, chronic liver disease patients. These four are being researched and they are coming to a conclusion. Because in every year, the deaths due to can cancer is increasing and it has become a very major health hazard. So the government is trying at its level best to control this cancer. Then comes the polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is another important thing which the prelims candidates have to keep in mind. It's a condition which can affect a woman's menstrual cycle, fertility, hormones, and aspects of her appearance. The polycystic ovaries are slightly larger than normal ovaries and have twice the number of polycystic, that is small cysts. Long-term health problems include insulin resistance, high BP, heart disease, depression, and mood swings. There is no cure for this polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is to be kept in mind. You, in spite of all these uh, developments in uh, medicine, we are not able to find this. Then comes another move. Ancient moments, the monuments and archeological sites and remains, there is an amendment act. The amendment and validation act came into force from 2010. Government of India tightened the rules, increased the penalties and the provision for creating new authorities in the act would prevent encroachments and help manage heritage areas. Normally, when we go to Red Fort or uh, Kutub Minar, there are a lot of encroachments in several places, wherever the Archaeological Survey of India describes it as an archaeological place, site, then the encroachments will start by encroaching it. Archaeological Survey of India, for the past 150 years, declared 3677, 3,677 historic structures as nationally important monuments. Since 1960s, the best practices across the world have involved the creation of buffer zones as additional sheaths of protection and to enrich the experience of monuments. Suppose if it is a national monument, it should be protected. So to preserve that uh, monument, they have additional buffer zones. In England, way back in 2000, 2,000 scheduled monuments and 10,000, 20,000 scheduled monuments and 10,000 conservation areas are protected by local authorities. That is the local self-government. They themselves will protect these things. The amended act of government of India to set up a new competent authority in every state chaired by the head of the state of archaeology department was uh, evinced and it has been formed according to this Amendment Act of 2020-10. Then we're moving on to World Allergy Organization. This allergy is a very health hazard. The White Book on Allergy brought out by World Allergy Organization mentions that around 20 to 30% of India's population was affected with one or more allergic diseases. The book brought out in 2011 gave a quick look of allergic disease prevalence of different countries. Asthma and rhinitis were reported to be 1 to 10 percent respectively in India in 1964, but recent reports suggest asthma variation from 3 to 14 percent and rhinitis as more as 20 percent. 
International Scientific Conference of World Allergy Organization was organized at Hyderabad way back in December 2010. This coverage of diabetics, CVD cancer, and chronic respiratory diseases, the four NCDs were posing a mounting challenge to the healthcare practitioners, administrators, and policymakers, said Gulam Nabi Azad. He was then the minister at the time. 30 million asthmatics are in the country, which constituted 10% of the global asthma burden. Asthmatics above 15 years alone number more than 17 million. World Allergy Organization president is Ruby Pavankar at the time, and he decided to start this research. Then comes the Atomic Energy Regulatory Body. It gave its clearance for the second key top up, first unit of 2000 megawatt Kundankulam nuclear power plant in Tamil Nadu. It was a controversial issue. There was a lot of controversy regarding this Kundankulam. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, at the time, is due to arrive in India for the 13th annual Indian Russia summit in 2010. The chairman of this Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, SS Bajaj, said the second heat up of the unit. An important step in the commissioning would involve elaborate checking of the performance of various systems. The plant with the 1000 megawatt each has been built with Russian collaboration. This was the main thrust of the problem. And regarding the prelims examination, these points are to be considered by the students and the thorough knowledge of this uh, detailed manner will give you hope to write your essay in the mains examination also. I wish you all the best.